Setting up your machine. Always inspect the shipment of your machine for evidence of damage before signing the bill of lading. A signed bill of lading indicates the shipment was received in good condition. If any equipment was received damaged, or if the number of pieces being delivered are in question, ask the freight company to make a notation on the bill. Do this for your own protection. If you discover any hidden damage after receipt of the shipment, ask the freight company to make an inspection promptly and file a claim with that company as soon as possible. Furnish as much supporting evidence as you can, such as a copy of the bill of lading, the original invoice, and several photos. Irontite will cooperate and assist in the preparation of claims on your behalf. However, we cannot assume any responsibility for damage in transit, nor Will we be responsible for the actual collection of claims or replacement of lost or damaged merchandise? Electrical service and wiring. The electrical hookup should be done by a qualified electrician. Please refer to the serial plate on the machine for the proper voltage and phase requirements. The amperage service on each machine should be as follows. For the five horsepower three phase motors on the FG5000 machines, you will need a 30 amp service and should use a minimum of 12 gauge wire. For single phase FG5000 and three phase FG10000, you will need a 60 amp service and a minimum of eight gauge wire. After the electrical hookup is complete, make sure that the rotation of the grinding motor is correct. Refer to the arrow on the motor body. Safety. Before we start the setup, let me bring up a few safety points. Always keep your work areas clean. Cluttered areas and benches invite accidents. Avoid dangerous environments. Do not use equipment in damp or wet locations. Keep the work area well lit. Do not expose your equipment to rain or caustic fumes. Keep non-operators away from the work area, especially children. If necessary, temporarily shut off the machine until the area is clear. Be sure to dress properly. Do not wear loose clothing or hair that can get caught in moving parts. Wear non-skid footwear with metal reinforcement. Use safety glasses. Face or dust masks should also be used when grinding. Stay alert, watch what you are doing, and use common sense. Do not operate the machine when you are tired or while using medication. Disconnect or shut off the power to the machine before servicing or when changing the grinding wheel. Avoid accidental starting. Make sure the emergency stop switch is off or pushed in when the machine is not in use. Do not overreach. Keep proper footing and balance at all times. Check for damaged parts. Before further use of the machine, a guard or other part of the machine that is damaged should be carefully checked to determine that it will operate properly and perform its intended function. Check for alignment of moving parts and binding of moving parts, broken parts, mountings, and any other condition that may affect its operation. A guard or other part that is missing or damaged should be properly repaired or replaced before the machine is used. The use of any accessories not specified in the manual may create a hazard. Don't use them until you fully understand what they are for and how they are used. Before connecting a machine to a power source, be sure the voltage supplied is the same as what is specified on the serial plate of the machine. Setting up your machine. Unskid your machine. There are four bolts holding the machine to the skid. Unbolt and remove the skid from under the machine. Do not ever use the machine with a skid under it. It is recommended to use a fork truck for unskidding your machine and always lift from the rear of the machine 
which is the heaviest side. Place your flywheel grinder into position leaving enough space on the side and in the rear to access the panels for maintenance in the future. Remove all rust protection put on at the factory. Use a level on the machine table, making sure the machine is level in all directions. Install and use the leveling bolts with the provided leveling pads and lock nuts as shown. Unpack the tool board and insert the two provided dowel pins into the back side of the board. Next, screw the top tray onto the tool board. Finally, bolt the tool board onto the machine. Unpack the tooling provided and place onto the tool board. Install any handles onto hand wheels or the dresser arm depending on the model you purchased. Fill the clear oil reservoir located in the rear of the tabletop. This provides lubrication to the column and the table. Fill the table reservoir. Remove the Allen head fill screw from the table. Check to ensure there is a rubber seal under the head of the fill screw. Using only Van Norman table lubricant, fill the table reservoir with lube. After testing at the factory, about one quart was removed for shipping. Use the provided dipstick to check the level of the lube reservoir. You must set the dipstick by adjusting the rod to be flush or even with the bottom of the table. The thickness of the table is the proper length for the dipstick rod. The lube level is full when it reads even with the groove near the bottom of the dipstick rod. Next, fill your coolant reservoir. The coolant provided is a concentrate and should be mixed 50 to 1 with water. Be sure the drain hose is directed to the back side of the reservoir and the pump is sitting on the grate in the front of the reservoir. Your machine should now be ready to operate.